Humans across the world currently use approximately 18 terawatts of energy each year. Plants provide nearly a third of this demand while fossil fuels provide almost two-thirds. With predictions that oil and gas will become extinct in 40 to 60 years, where coal may continue to exist for another 130 years or so, these are finite resources that will need to be replaced with renewable alternatives. Besides the fact that we are running out of these resources, the emissions generated by processing these fuels contribute to as much as 90% of global warming. Nuclear energy is currently our leading renewable resource. However, problems associated with it have led us toward researching safer and more efficient technologies. Conditions on Earth offer wealth and variety of energy potentials waiting to be developed and utilized in a clean and responsible way. The key is to harvest these resources in geographic locations where the climate conditions are ideal while improving our harvesting techniques. Wind is a renewable resource with the potential to provide Earth with approximately 200 times the amount of energy we currently use each year. Geothermal power is a cost-effective, reliable, sustainable, and environmentally friendly resource that utilizes stored energy below the Earth's surface to create steam, which passes through turbines and generates electricity. Geothermal hotspots have the potential to provide Earth with twice the total energy we currently use. Hydroelectric power has the capacity to generate great amounts of renewable energy, but the displacement of tens of millions of people across the world and the associated ecological costs due to blocking waterways are causing us to reevaluate the viability of this option. Our sun is our most abundant resource. It offers far more potential energy than all these other renewables combined. Solar technology continues to advance and is becoming an affordable key toward creating self-sustaining systems, although we have barely scratched the surface on effectively plugging into its power. And lastly, it is worth mentioning wave energy and its potential. While the technology to harness the immense power of the ocean is still in its infancy and underutilized as a resource, researchers here in Oregon are at the forefront of its development and beginning to take advantage of our proximity to this great resource. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, energy associated with the manufacturing and operation of buildings currently makes up nearly half of all energy consumed, with transportation and industry accounting for the other half. Therefore, if we can decrease the amount of energy associated with buildings by designing them to be efficient and self-sustaining, we will drastically reduce the total annual consumption of energy. Net zero energy principles are redefining how we design buildings in response to the challenge of lowering energy consumption. In general, a net zero energy building produces at least as much energy as it uses over the course of a year. Currently, the net zero energy concept in regards to buildings is defined in four different ways by the U.S. Department of Energy. Net zero site energy refers to a building that produces at least as much energy as it uses in a year. Net zero source energy meets the site energy requirements and also accounts for the embodied energy used to generate and deliver energy that arrives on the site from the power grid when external power is required. Net zero energy costs refer to the requirement for a building to balance the amount of money spent on energy with the amount of money received for selling generated energy to the power grid over the course of a year. And finally, net zero energy emissions refer to a building that produces at least as much renewable energy as it uses from non-renewable energy sources, taking into account that energy arriving from the power grid may come from a combination of both renewable and non-renewable sources. The three-tier system prioritizes a smart design approach for creating a net zero energy building. Tier 1 is the first and highest priority and utilizes a super insulating building envelope, focusing on the use of efficient building materials to create a controlled environment. Tier 2 is the second step to consider that utilizes passive heating and cooling systems adapted to the unique climate of the region. And Tier 3 is the last consideration only after Tiers 1 and 2 are fully satisfied, utilizing efficient mechanical means to generate and distribute energy within the building. The single most important consideration when designing a net zero energy building is the climate conditions of the site's geographic location. A psychometric chart is a tool that recommends types of passive systems appropriate to include in a building's design. As the procedure for designing a net zero energy building depends much on the environment, our focus will be on design of net zero energy buildings in the Pacific Northwest region. We will use the recently completed Portland Community College Newburgh campus designed by Henneberry Eddy Architects as an existing example of how to achieve a net zero energy building in our climate. This building has been designed to use about one sixth of that of other similar buildings in use today. The design of this building begins with a super-insulated envelope consisting of efficient low-emissive windows and extensive use of interior concrete mass in floors and walls to absorb and stabilize building temperatures. A natural ventilation system includes a night flush cool-down process that allows cool air in, aided by wind-powered turbines that draw warm air up and out through the ventilation stacks. A passive daylight system maximizes natural indirect sunlight with skylights called clouds 
that diffuse and distribute daylight to reduce or eliminate the need for electric lighting. Ceiling fans are used as needed to circulate air to maintain comfort levels. The key to the building's net zero capability is the 7,000 square foot rooftop solar panel array powering the smart mechanical systems. 20% of the array consists of translucent panels that overhang the building's entrance and can be observed from underneath. The solar panel array provides energy for all the building's electrical needs, including a heat pump system that is four times more efficient than traditional electric heating in the Northwest. The heat pump circulates water at 90 degrees Fahrenheit through pipes embedded in the exposed concrete slab. Under these combined systems, all mechanical cooling is eliminated and very little heating is needed. Infrastructure for a stormwater disposal system is in place. The landscape design emphasizes the use of native plants and a high efficiency irrigation system to achieve low water landscaping. We met with PCC Newberg's project architect, Erica Dunn, from Hanaberry Eddy Architects to better understand how this building was conceived. These practical approaches that Erica discussed with us are explained in this video clip from the PCC Newberg website. The building is sort of like an old home with big porches out on the front where if you got hot, you went outside where the air could move through or you opened up windows that allowed air to cross-ventilate through the entire building, bringing cooler air in uh, from the outside as well as when air is moving through a space, you feel cooler. So in a lot of ways, this building is looking backwards in order to look forwards to a time when we use less energy. If we can dramatically lower our building's energy consumption, and if we can generate that amount on site with renewable resources, we will have accomplished a major decrease in total energy needed for a more responsible stewardship of our planet's resources.